Climate change often focuses on global scale data and distant consequences. But how does it impact the daily lives of both humans and wildlife in Greenland? We're going to go uh, dog sledging. I've never done dog sledging before, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's nice to see the dogs out there. Uh, I think they're going to be rapidly fast, kind of like our Extreme E car. We in Greenland have been using the dogs for thousands of years. They are almost like family. They grow up, I follow them their, their whole lives. We are half of the dogs we used to have here in, in Greenland. One of the reasons is that we have better machines that to some extent outcompete the, the dogs. But the main reason is climate change. Our season of going out with dogs is getting shorter and shorter because the weather is changing all the time. The lakes, the fjords are not freezing. If they don't have this job, then they will not be here. I think we have 15,000 dogs left, so maybe it can collapse and, and, and the breed will not be there anymore and a big part of our culture will disappear. The drivers visited the Elulisat Ice Fjord Centre to learn about the importance of ice to the communities and ecosystems of the region. Specifically for this area, we used to have sea ice and could travel on the sea ice up north. So we could take uh, dog sleds and cars and snowmobiles and go to other places. That area has ended. It's very obvious that the sea ice has gone due to the rising temperature of the sea. The most important thing with this uh, ice fjord center for me is to tickle children's curiosity, to make them want to educate themselves, get to know more about how things are linked and, and what they can do to make it not a, a better world, but a good place to live. Owned by the Greenlandic government, the Kangalusawak International Science Support Facilities, known as KISS, provide laboratories and equipment to scientists coming from all over the world to study the local area. They are researching, for instance, the melting of the ice cap. They are researching on some of the methane which are provided from the ice cap. In 2001 or two, we could drive all the way up on the marine and on the ice cap we could also drive there. But we can't do that anymore because of the changes of the environment. In the last couple of years, we have experienced a lot more wet, like rain, which affect the soil, which also affect the roofing of our houses. One of the students working out of KISS is caribou expert Laura. Laura has been following the species and observing their behaviour changes in this landscape due to the effects of climate change. Yeah, you can see that white spot just there. Yeah. Just eating, not, not looking at us actually, it's very nice. So now it's Sometimes it's easier to see if it's a male or a female because they have a white spot on the ass because they have this winter coat. Caribou is very, very important for Greenland. Mostly what I will study is their diet and their movement on the landscape. On summer, climate change will mean warmer temperatures, which will mean uh, more food for them, which will be fine for the population will increase. But also it has a negative point, which will be like, there will be more mosquitoes and flies and they will harass them so much, sometimes they cannot even feed. But in winter, which is the important thing, it will be more rain instead of snow, and this rain on the snow means ice, and this ice will encapsulate the, all the plants so they will not eat, so the mortality will be very high. We also want people to think about their own role in this system and uh, that human cannot consider itself as superior to nature. We have a lot of tourists coming in from all over the world. They are very concerned about the melting of the ice sheet and wants to see it. And a very common question is the, to us is that what are we going to do about it? But I think we live only 56 people up here and it's a very, very, very big country. So we just have to turn it around and say, what are you going to do about it?